Guilford progeria syndrome is a rare genetic disease affecting less than 1,000 people globally per year. It presents immediately and progresses from birth causing cardiovascular disease, rapid aging, and eventual death. The phenotype is caused by a mutation in the LMNA gene resulting in a lamin A protein that is 50 amino acids short on the carboxyl terminus. The mutated lamin A protein is termed progerin and aggregates in cells, eventually causing cell death. The LMNA gene is 3,259 base pairs long. The healthy lamin A protein produced by it is 572 amino acids long, and the mutated progerin protein is 522 amino acids long. Lamins are proteins that are thought to aid in nuclear membrane fluidity and stability due to their hydrophobic nature and flexibility. They are also believed to regulate chromatin structure and gene expression. The pre-mRNA produced from the LMNA gene undergoes alternative splicing, producing mRNAs coding for lamin A, lamin B, and lamin C proteins, among others, but the most common among vertebrates are lamin A and lamin B. The splice variant that is affected in Hutchinson-Guilford progeria syndrome is the lamin A splice variant. The mutated progerin protein is shorter and less flexible than the lamin A protein, and thus destabilizes membrane fluidity. The mutated protein aggregates faster than it can be disposed of and causes apoptosis, weakening the heart muscles, and leading to other premature aging effects. Several treatments have been developed to alleviate the symptoms of progeria. One is the use of rapamycin to clear the aggregated protein and restore nuclear membrane fluidity. Moderate success has been seen in the resolution of the progeria phenotype using long-term application of rapamycin on tissue. Similarly, temsorolimus has been effective because it is an analog of rapamycin, but has a greater pharmacokinetic value, and so is more able to permeate deeper into tissues more quickly. HGPS is a platform for research on diseases caused by mutations. Given that progeria is so rare, and the lifespan of a person born with the mutation is so short, there is a lack of effort placed into researching the disease or finding a cure. Although it would be difficult to find a cure for such a disease, research could provide greater knowledge on aging and mutation treatments, not just for HGPS, but also for many other diseases caused by mutations in the genome. Over the course of this research, insight was found on practices and treatments, such as mosaic mutation treatments, and how they can extend the lifespan of a fatal disease, such as HGPS. This is just one example of many treatment options that could be acquired from the study of this severe disease. In the future, the insights drawn from this research can be implemented and practiced on other patients with other diseases and possibly lead to finding a practice that can reverse the effects of any mutation in the genome. By cloning the LMNA gene, one is able to study the mutability of one's genes, including an understanding of the differences between a healthy and mutated protein. This gives one further understanding of the study of minor mutations with a great impact. To study this disease, the procedure for cloning, expression, and protein purification was simulated. Polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, was used to amplify the targeted sequence of the intronless mRNA gene made from the lamina mRNA in reverse transcriptase. PCR consists of three steps, heating, cooling, and replication. By using a plasmid editor, a free-to-use program, the correct primer from 18 to 22 base pairs long was retrieved from the DNA sequence. The DNA is then heated and denatured, allowing the primer to attach to the three prime end of both strands. The primer then allows the TAC polymerase to replicate the targeted sequence. This replication is known as annealing, or creating the corresponding gene strand to the targeted sequence. For annealing to occur, the solution must be cooled so the DNA can undergo replication. After the targeted sequence is replicated, the process is repeated, generating DNA segments in the several orders of magnitude. These targeted DNA sequences are then placed into P5X vectors. The vector contains a multiple cloning site, and it is at this site that it receives a double-stranded break from the restriction enzyme, allowing the DNA to be ligated into a specific restriction site. The P5X vector is then transformed into the BL21 NEB derivative E. coli host strain by polarizing the cell membrane, causing it to become porous and allow the uptake of the exogenous vectors containing the LMNA gene into the host cells. The LAC operon promoter is then activated by addition of allolactose to remove the LAC repressor and begin expression of the protein during the beginning of the log growth phase.
The host cells, once holding about 70% of their mass in expressed protein, are lysed and the lysate is separated from the proteins. There are three types of protein purification chromatography studied, affinity chromatography, size exclusion chromatography, and ion exchange chromatography. Affinity chromatography was chosen. First, the genetic code for a peptide tag was included in the vector. The tag peptide is then covalently attached to the laminate protein. A mixture of the tagged protein along with other proteins was run through a column that takes advantage of the binding affinity for the tag to the column medium. The column is then washed with a buffer to remove any non-bound proteins and the desired protein is eluted by adding a salt to alter conditions for the binding affinity the tag has for the column. By this process, the LMNA gene was cloned, the lamin A protein expressed, and finally purified.